My name is Dr. Andrew Mulo. I am the Minister for Health Services in Makweni County. I am also the chairperson of the County Ministers for Health Caucus, uh, where I am the co-chair of the health sector in the governmental forum. First, I think I decided to be a doctor while I was uh, younger than high school. Uh, in my early primary school, uh, in class four, is actually when I made a decision that I would like to be a doctor. I did my KCSE in Makwendi Boys in the year 2000, and uh, I actually scored as in all subjects. Uh, but uh, the Kenya National Examination Council would not believe that uh, we could get as in all subjects, so they cancelled our chemistry results, and therefore I got a Y. I, I, we got away because they said, it was said that uh, I showed the other students, uh, I leaked or I showed the other students chemistry practicals, which as far as I'm concerned was not the case. I actually don't remember, uh, not just sharing because I was index one and I was seated in a corner alone. And therefore I have to date never really understood what happened. But uh, it was not just me, uh, 99 students uh, of the 139 had their chemistry uh, results cancelled and was cited as the, as the chemistry practical. And I decided to repeat uh, my KCSE in Machako School, so I went back to Machako School where I eventually uh, did my Form 4 and scored straight as in all subjects. It really helped uh, me start appreciating life from a different perspective. That sometimes it is not always what you do that gives you results. Sometimes things that you have no idea of can affect uh, what you do. Was it difficult? I was a young, energetic, innocent young, young boy. So I did not actually know anything uh, else. So I, I mean, I said, you know, they have not given me my results. I am going to go and do it and prove uh, to them that I, I had passed my exams. Uh, thankfully, uh, I even I, I did uh, even better uh, because I enjoyed and uh, built networks. It also brought some uh, confusion in my pursuit to be a doctor because after passing my KCSC, from Machako School, I was actually offered a, 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 a scholarship to study architecture in Japan. And I did interviews, I did everything, and I was, I got confused because sometimes when you are young, there's the excitement of sheer travel to Japan. So I thought traveling to Japan would make me f uh, a better person. So, but uh, I had a conversation with my father then, and he asked me, why have you changed your mind? Why do you want to go to do, uh, other than the scholarship, what else takes you to Japan? Then I could not answer him. Then he told me, you are supposed to be a doctor. Go do your medicine in the University of Nairobi. And I forgot about the scholarship and uh, went uh, for medicine. I was a, I was a small boy, uh, maybe the age of 10, 11, uh, while in class. Four, I got sick. I think malaria was common then, and uh, there were no dispensaries or health centers or facilities around our home. So you would get sick and you just stay at home and your body is able to, to deal with it and you go back to school or uh, to your normal activities. So this time around I got an illness while in school. Uh, must have been the March of 1991. I still remember the date I was admitted in hospital, it must have been the 24th of March. Uh, then I was uh, released from school because I fell in in school, went home, and of course my parents could not afford to take me to school, to, to, to hospital, so they, they, they let me stay at home. Uh, after three or so days, I got severely sick and uh, very, very sick. And I think I got what today as a doctor I, underst I, I understand would be febrile conversions. So uh, my parents thought I had actually died. 
and uh, went to call the village uh, funeral committee chair to come and start preparing for my burial. Thankfully, one of our neighbors who had, uh, who had schooled uh, and knew something about health seeking and had a car passed by and uh, he found me and the committee starting to plan the burial and he decided to come and check. Then he realized I was actually breathing and uh, he rushed me to Makwene County Referral Hospital. Another incident happened in uh, 28th of October uh, 1998 while I was in Form 2 in Makwene Boys. I actually had a previous uh, night which was very good. Then in the morning when we were waking up for preps, I realized I did not have the energy to get out of bed. And uh, I told one of my colleagues uh, who are students with that, I am unable to work. So he thought to wake up, so he thought I'm joking and I do not want to attend uh, morning, early morning preps. So they just went and left me in bed. I, I later developed what I think was a, uh, was a dysentery or diarrhea or something while still in bed and I could not move. So I, I had to soil my beddings and I stayed there. Guys came for lunch, they went back. No one had realized I'm actually sick. So by the time it got to 7 p.m. or thereabout, I lost consciousness. I did not know where I was, and I think at that point is when after games, uh, my, my fellow students realized this guy must be very sick. Then I was brought to Makweni County Fire Hospital again. I was admitted, and for two days I did not know where I was, and I woke up on the third day again. If it were not for the good work of the healthcare workers, I would probably not be here uh, for this interview. Medical school is not easy, uh, but I also enjoyed. I had my good moments in medical school. My best memories in, in, in this journey of uh, health as, is in medical school because I am those uh, students who would get time to play pool, to run kiosks in the university, to do other things, uh, not necessarily the academia work. But uh, we also worked hard, very hard, to ensure that uh, we registered uh, good grades in the university and uh, we, we passed through medical school and eventually uh, without any supplementaries or repeats or rewinds, uh, which uh, is pretty common in medical school. So uh, effort, but I also learned while in medical school to balance between being a doctor and also being a human being. Uh, because uh, we participated in many uh, community things. I also had time to go and teach uh, as a hustle, as a side hustle, in some of the colleges in town uh, that were teaching health related courses. So I was not just a student, I was a student and I also created some time during free time to go and teach in the evenings, early mornings and on the weekends. So. I also learned politics, uh, joined politics while in campus. I fight for campus rep, I think, uh, while I was in second year, of course, unsuccessfully. Uh, the one thing that I did well in medical school is to marry while I was in third year. And <laughs> I decided to be a father uh, uh, and a husband uh, while in medical school, uh, something that I have never regretted to date. Uh, yeah, so therefore uh, I enjoyed medical school. And from medical school, we went to work as an intern in Machakos Level 5 Hospital. And there is where now I started appreciating the difference between the theory of class and the practice of medicine. I remember this uh, Easter holiday uh, in the year 2009 when I was on call for surgical uh, department in Machakos Level 5. And I think there were like six mass accidents along Nairobi Mombasa Highway and I was the first on call and I had to deal with uh, over 250 injured patients over three days. So I remember from Friday to Monday I never stepped in my house and I was working in theater, between theater, outpatient awards and 
Yeah, and I realize what does not uh, kill you, uh, break you, uh, strengthens you. So I think from that I carried the passion. I went, to, I was posted to Makweni County Fire Hospital, where I worked briefly and was transferred to Mboni, where I went and was a sub-district hospital then, did not have theatre, did not have anything. But uh, when I went there, I committed that because of my passion that I would open up a theatre, and I actually started the theatre in Mboni. And, uh, and uh, by the time I left, I was the only doctor in that hospital for three and a half years. And in those three and a half years, there is no single day I ever referred a patient because I'm busy. So I used to be called, whatever I'm doing, Monday through Sunday I worked. I still remember the first day, the first week that I went to Borne, and uh, there was this river that uh, had a drift that when there were flash floods or there were rains, would be flooded and therefore no vehicles would cross. I w had been called to come and assist in, in a referral and I could not cross the river because I was coming from Machakos and the ambulance could not cross the river as well. So we were, I could see the vehicle across, I was on the other side and the uh, poor lady uh, uh, passed on, uh, awaiting for the river water to, 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 to subside which was very sad. And I think from that moment, I vowed to myself that no single uh, cesarean, case of cesarean case section would be referred from Borne while I'm the doctor there. So I made sure that theater was operational. I think by the time I left the hospital, I had, with my own hands, done over 6,000 surgeries. In Borne, I'm very proud of the work that we did, especially uh, all the cases that uh, we did, mostly surgical, my interest in surgical, surgicals, uh, I am most proud of the Makweni Universal Healthcare Program, which is a program that uh, I personally was involved in conceptualization, even writing the, 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 the concept, uh, the, typing, the typing work. I did it and uh, presented to His Excellency the Governor as a model that I thought would have far-reaching effects because when I was uh, working in the wards, uh, while I was working in the clinics, I would realize how we, how we were giving patients a raw deal uh, in terms of uh, you would ask a patient to do an investigation. Because as a doctor, there are, you need to confirm a diagnosis, like you tell a patient, go do an ultrasound. Then you real, when you are an outpatient, you tell send them for an ultrasound, expecting them to bring the results, the ultrasound results, so that you make a proper diagnosis. The patients will just go home because they do not have the money to do it. If they are, you are lucky, they would come back to you and tell you, uh, we have been unable to get the money. And therefore, sometimes you would uh, manage patients from on differential diagnosis because you cannot confirm diagnosis. So I thought, about having a program that would ensure that the clinician seated at the outpatient, in the inpatient, seen patients, whenever they ask for investigations to be done to patients, they actually get what they require so that when patients are being managed, the clinician is sure that they are managing that illness. And that's why I thought about a program that would, would cover our indigents, the people who cannot afford NHIF, the people who cannot afford any form of insurance, to access health without thinking about the depth of their pockets. And that is why, how we designed the Makweni Universal Healthcare. And uh, it's a program that uh, has had wide acceptance in Makweni and beyond. And uh, I am very, very proud of how, what it has come to be. Uh, sometimes I even think the program uh, build a conversation around universal healthcare uh, in this country. Um, where you are actively involved in KMPD, championing for the rights of doctors and whatnot. Um, are you able to implement some of those things that you were asking the government back then? Uh, first, I, I think not are you able, I have been able to. First, uh, prior to the 2001, 2011 strike, which I actively participated in as the chair of the Southeastern region of the 
a doctor's union. Uh, the doctor's remuneration was very, very poor. To be honest, uh, what we were paid when we entered service, I look back and say it was actually a joke. Uh, because uh, for a doctor to earn that 5,000 Kenya shillings per month, and I don't believe in terms of economies, a lot has changed between 2011 and now, because the wage bill in most of the sectors have remained the same, uh, was actually a joke. So one, I was concerned that the remuneration that doctors were getting that time was very, very poor, vis-a-vis -vis the work that they do. And a lot of times, that time, doctors were resigning. And we actually had many opportunities to go and work in the private sector, in the NGO world, that were paying up to 10 times our current salary then. So the one thing that made me continue working in the public sector is the realization that, uh, one, I come from a humble background. And my people cannot access health elsewhere other than public facilities. So by my resigning, I would have denied uh, people from similar background access to uh, doctors. So I chose to stay. And when it came to issues of agitation, I decided to agitate from within. In terms of the work, the current work I do, there are many low moments. There are many, many low moments. And it is not because of what, uh, it's because like now, when, and I want to talk about the story of devolution and how the many things that we have done here in Makueni and sometimes, not sometimes, many places across the world, uh, the country, devolution has really changed the way health is done. But there are moments that I feel like we have lost it because there are still issues within the devolution arena that make Kenyans feel and ask, would we be better if health was not devolved? And when that conversation, uh, because I hear it a lot in, within healthcare workers, within communities, it, it, it's a, I ask myself, is it r really me, or is it really the devolution, or is it the people who are charged with devolution that may not be doing what is supposed to be done? Because to me, Devolution is the best thing that has ever happened to the health sector. The doctor strike of 2016 and 17 was also a low moment for me. The lower moment was when, because I'm on the government side, uh, our colleagues thought I am part of the people who are, who are pushing the doctors to be put uh, behind bars. That was actually <laughs> that was actually paradoxically a very, very low moment for me because uh, I, I, I think we could have done it in a better way. I think we could have managed that strike in a better way. Uh, when there are those one, almost 1,000 or 1,500 doctors stomaching, is the pay increase worth, uh, worth it? Uh, because we have doctors who are jobless. We have doctors who will Today, if given an opportunity to take half of the salary that the doctors were able to negotiate after the strike, they will take it. So did we gain or lose? So to me, that still bothers me. Uh, my daughter is a candidate this year. She is 13, and the small one is uh, seven years. I think I was fortunate to have a young family early. So, I, I, my family understood. I, even when I had my traditional wedding, uh, which is Rurasho, I actually asked my in-laws to allow me to rush to Mboni uh, and do an operation for a patient who needed emergency intervention. And it actually happened. My in-laws were not sure. They thought I had run away from, from, from the traditional uh, uh, wedding. But my family understood. They stood by me. They have been uh, a motivation. They have been uh, the source of my strength because they they are, they asked me uh, they, to go, 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 go get it. And uh, I think they understand that uh, 
I am 100% committed uh, to service to our clients, our patients. So of course I know, looking back, uh, my young children would have spent more time with their dad, but I have chosen to spend the time that I get with them, but as well uh, dedicate myself to service uh, of the people of uh, Makwene or the community that I serve.